So first thing that I wanted to go over today, I have this new proposed legislation. It is called House Resolution 1. It's mostly related to voting laws and the way in which gerrymandering takes place, but they want to federalize all of this. So whoever has the federal power, essentially, the House of Reps and, and the Senate, whoever holds the Congress and the presidency would really have full jurisdiction over the entire country as it relates to voting laws as well as redistricting which is actually a very very slippery slope but it is a it is a guarantee for a one party rule whichever party is now in power is the party that will be in power forever that's that's essentially what this is made for this uh, house resolution and i have an epic times piece on it and then i also have a real clear politics piece on it that gives it much more clarity but just from the epic times piece it's written by mark tapscott now, this is all the proposals that would come from House Resolution 1. I read into it a little bit. Uh, it's about, I think, 30 pages long. They have the link included in this in this article here. And as always, all the articles will be in the description. I'll have it under a tab called like the show notes. That's where I'll have everything, including the, the very end of the show. I'll go through a couple quick articles just to try to uh, jog everyone's memory, make them understand certain things that are going on but aren't huge news stories. Just some things to keep an eye out on. And I will show you in this show that I'm going to have one topic. I'm trying to think of what it is now, but it was something that I referred to in a couple podcasts ago i said oh watch out for that see what happens and now look here it is in the mainstream news even a bigger story and i'll explain it when it gets there i just i'm trying to jog my memory here so first off this would ensure this hr1 nationwide online voter registration with minimal verification requirements nationwide same day registration nationwide uh, automatic voter registration unless an individual speci specifically requests not to be registered, nationwide legalization of ballot harvesting, uh, nationwide registration of 16 to 17 year olds, nationwide uh, availability of mail-in ballots with minimal screening qualifications, nationwide restoration of felon voting rights, placing redistricting process under supervision of congressionally mandated independent commissions, restructuring federal election commission from current bipartisan requirements to a majority party control, uh, permitting members of Congress to draw salary from campaign funds in addition to official compensation. That one in and of itself is huge. That's that's that is you are going to be taking whatever campaign funds that you have. You're going to take it and just put it in your pocket, essentially. So fine, and and this is something that that's done, but usually it's laundered through some sort of illicit uh, business, usually. But this is now right in the open, and then findings to support uh, statehood for District of Columbia, D.C., and Puerto Rico. So. Some of the ones I really want to go over. So 16, 17-year-olds now can vote, according to this. Nationwide, and, and this is all to get more Democrat voters, because they know young people generally vote more liberal. Nationwide legalization of ballot harvesting. Ballot harvesting, you go to people's house, you collect the ballots, and then you go drop them off at a location. There's only certain states that allow this to happen, because there could be manipulation involved in this. Now, this video I have myself, now just even coming out with all of these statements, I'm probably going to get it taken down, and I probably will get my second strike from YouTube just thinking about this right now, because I just got another video taken down retroactively. That was from, it was the day of the riots in the, at the Capitol building, and then literally that same day i ended up getting one of my videos taken down and they told me that was my first strike so that one was retroactive at that point technically so they really could not give me a second strike but now this one knowing that i already have the first strike and i'm continuing with this i probably will be getting a second strike from the from just reporting this alone in hr1 it is a legitimate document like i said it'll be in the show notes there's a link in the piece so you can see it um, but yeah, this will probably get me my second strike, just mentioning and talking about this. So nationwide online voter registration. Then I also read into, you could actually register the day of too, and only specific states do this. Uh, now the restoring of felon voting rights, and then also they were going to count the felons as actual voters to get more people in the districts as well. So some cities that have a high felony count, those people would be counted into the redistricting to get them more House of Rep members. That's the point. All of this is just for Democrat rule. This has nothing to do with what they think is constitutionally fair. Like I said, if you can now recognize somebody as an adult at 16, 17 years old to uh, to vote, then you should let them be drinking at that age at this point. I mean, it just, just doesn't really make any sense. 
And do you really want 16 to 17? Can you think of when you were 16 or 17 years old, did you have any clue what politics were? I didn't know. I didn't know until I probably graduated college uh, when I was 22 years old. It's probably, probably when I started to actually look into what politics was. So what else they have? Automatic uh, voter registration. This one's really scary unless an individual specifically requests not to be registered. So just automatic opt into the system. And then that can easily be manipulated because if someone doesn't vote, then they can try to somehow uh, structure it or figure it out so they could send out votes for people that have never even voted before or aren't voting. And this is the most, these, these two are probably the most important ones. The placing redistricting process under supervision of congressional mandated independent commissions. So these are going to be people that are in Congress that so select the mandate, mandated independent commissions. And that is just not of the Republican character. That is not of the Republic. That is not a constitutional principle. There's a reason that we elect representatives. It's not so then they can pass off the power to a bureaucrat to make decisions for the entire country. And to begin with, that's something that's supposed to be the the uh, redistricting process is something that's supposed to be of the state legislative power of the state governor power. It, it's supposed to be something that is prescribed specifically to the states, and that's all written into the Constitution. Anything having to do with uh with voting or running elections that's supposed to be prescribed to the state now what we're seeing is we are seeing a federal overhaul of our voting voting system so that it can be in line in lockstep with the democrat party because that's the party right now that's in power and it's funny because because the republicans had power for about two years i'm not sitting there defending republicans but they didn't even put anything there was no proposal even close to this that they wanted um so, and then the other one was restructuring Federal Election Commission from current bipartisan requirement to major party control. So they would have this Federal Election Commission would be the majority party would control it, as in the Democrat Party would control it. And then they, they would institute, and I said this at the time when people were saying, oh, people, they need to federalize the federal elections when there was all these these voter these uh, voter fraud allegations, which, by the way, I've referred every single time in these videos that get kicked off, voter fraud allegations every time. I don't say they're voter fraud. I say it's voter fraud allegations. I can't even utter those words without my video getting taken down and then me getting strikes and getting taken off of YouTube. I cannot even say it. No one, everyone's afraid to say it. Everyone uh, uh, that's regulated by the FEC or the FCC, I'm sorry, the FCC with the radio, television, all that. Uh, Rush Limbaugh can't say it. Buck Sexton doesn't say it. None of them. They, they go, they talk about how can this system, that they're, they're talking about the Wall Street situation. That's rigged. This rigged. That. And then they say, oh, elections. Oh, can't say nothing about it. I'm not allowed to because I will literally get taken off of here for saying something. So it's just weird that the one thing you cannot even question, it is a beyond reproach uh, categorization of a... Of a of a system you cannot say anything about it and yeah so permitting the the members of congress now we're having the federal government now depict what the entire country should be doing in their voting systems and their voter i guess you would say their voter uh methods and the reason that they prescribe this to the individual states the individual states their legislative branch would know themselves what is the best for their people because they're directly representative of the people and they know how you know the system works okay in idaho let's say we have a lot of farmers there potato farmers let's open up the polls at this time and end at this time because then a lot of our most of our uh voter population will be able to vote at that time and that's the point of this so the roadmap to the one party rule this is even more important because i remember i read this in the piece i read i i skimmed through the 35 page uh house resolution and one of the things which was very weird is if states do not adhere to these rules, they now will get no federal money. So now what we're doing is we're holding money at ransom from the federal government so that they have to instill the policies that the federal government is trying to push down their throat for a one-party rule. So this piece, it's a roadmap to a one-party rule. It is written by Phil Klein. is from Real Clear Politics. And it states, it starts off, although the Constitution explicitly places 
state legislatures in charge of managing federal elections. H.R. 1 seeks to use the power of the purse to bludgeon the states into conforming to a centralized system pioneered in California and other deep blue states. Congress can't technically compel the states to change their voting laws, but seasoned politicians know that the states have become dependent on federal money to run their elections and can't afford to pick up the tab themselves. So they're going to have to adhere to these rules because they legitimately cannot afford to run these uh, federal elections themselves. And the federal government will not give them money unless they adhere to their rules. To make matters worse, H.R. 1 declares that Congress possesses ultimate supervisory power over federal elections, end quote. An extraordinary usurpation of government authority that the founders specifically assigned to the states, which is true. That's all correct. Now, H.R. 1 next, it, co it would codify the very practices, many of them currently illegal in most states, that created widespread irregularities in the 2020 elections and contributed greatly to public mistrust of the electoral process. In 2020, state and local officials used the COVID-19 pandemic as justification to ignore or deliberately violate state election laws if hr1 is enacted they won't need any such excuse in 2022 because the states will have no choice but to implement policies such as legalized ballot harvesting early voting and universal mail-in voting as well as repeal of voter id laws signature matching laws and other ballot security measures so any type of ballot security uh, such as voter ID laws, which I think is is probably one of the most reasonable as it relates to election security, um, signature matching, which we saw a very a lack of in Georgia. We saw a lack of that in other states. I think Pennsylvania as well. They changed the entire law around through executive fiat. They used the Secretary of State to change the law as it relates to signature matching in Georgia. Particularly, they're making people. There had to be three people to check the signature match to verify, and then everyone had to sign off. Uh, whereas years ago, it wasn't the same way, and that was all changed without the legislative branch, which is directly uh, in violation of the Constitution and the other ballot security measures. So they're going to set up a system where there are re there's really no ballot security. So next... For example, H.R. 1 would allow ballot harvesting on steroids. Voters would, for the first time, have the ability to print out their ballots at home. This, this is insane here. They would have the ability to print out their ballots at home, creating a gaping security hole that could easily be exploited by either domestic or foreign interests. The legislation also allows third party to collect ballots from an unlimited number of absentee voters and submit them through ballot drop boxes dramatically increasing the risk that vulnerable Americans could be bullied, bribed, or blackmailed for their votes uh, without the protection of election workers. So the very last part there where the, the ballot harvesting, that happened actually in Texas. It was a person that was registered as a Republican that was ballot harvesting, but they were walking around pushing people to vote as for Democrats. And there's video from Project Veritas. She actually got arrested for it. The allegations are still going through the court system process. So this is a real thing. This is actual. This actually happens. And then another part of this that it states is under the rules outlined in H.R. 1, election observers wouldn't be able to even challenge the legitimacy of ballots without written documentation, making it virtually impossible to document or deter election irregularities. So pretty much they want to eliminate the ballot watchers, the people that are supposed to observe what's going on. And the only way that they can challenge it is to write some sort of documentation on it as it's happening but then when that's happening then there's other then they have to sit there and watch other ballots being counted so it's very wishy-washy it's not good um and that's what they're proposing they're, they're proposing essentially a chance for a one-party rule just to gain more and more power more political power and loosen the restrictions on voting so they can stuff the ballot box that's what it sounds like to me now you could you could perceive it as you want to but that's for my from what I'm seeing here is I think we need more voter security. We should have voter ID laws. Uh, we should have people. And if you just think about it, how difficult it is in real life to live without having an ID and to make it as if people are so stupid that they can't get an ID is borderline. It is, it is uh, repugnant. It is like, disrespectful to make it like, Oh, well, you know, the average, the average minority, you can't, can't get it a vote, uh, an ID. That's usually what the Democrat party says. So they're disenfranchising a bunch of minority voters. So you're telling us from the Democrat party, you guys are telling us that your, your voting base is so stupid that they can't even go and get their own ID. 
And ID's free, from what I understand, especially in Jersey. I'm pretty sure the driver's license, you have to pay like five bucks or something for the registration for it. But a ID, I think you can, I'm pretty sure you can go to the motor vehicle and get just an ID and it's free. So they're, what they're implying is that their voter base is so dumb that they can't even get IDs. And that's really not the truth. What, what they're actually really saying is they don't want the idea of voter ID because then you can just walk in there. For example, in New Jersey, I can literally walk in there and get a provisional ballot and I did not have to show ID. I didn't have to do anything because I know because that's what I did. 